Hey there, Hitchhikers. Mindless Bowel here, and we're back for episode 15 of No Man's Sky. We're heading to the planet that was formerly called Anus Sovistique, or Anus Sovistique. I'm sure probably sure they didn't intend it to be called Anus, but it is uh, another ocean planet, only this time frozen solid instead of wracked by toxic storms. We have extreme winter storms, almost more severe than the toxic storms on Mu. I renamed this planet, you'll see later, as uh, Hatley's Hope, which is the name of the Whalen yutani owned colony on the now famous planet of LV-426. And it's a kind of nice, bleak, windy atmosphere. I kind of wanted to pull something out, but I'm sure somebody already claimed LV-426. Though I'm not sure if once somebody claims one, if, if nobody else is able to claim the name. I've picked a couple things here that I'm sure somebody should have used by now. Like I named the other water planet. There's another ocean planet in the system, the Agar system. But I named the other planet Caladan because it was dark blue, like uh, Caladan from Dune, where Paul Atreides was born. And uh, I'm surprised that after like two weeks of this game existing, that nobody picked it. So I think anybody can pick the names, whatever names they want. But it was a pretty brutal planet. There was uh, not many sentinels floating around. There's no natural titanium. I found no ways to steal titanium from this little sentinel pods on the ground. And so I had to basically rely on zinc flowers and uh, a lot of shooting holes into the ground in order to uh, avoid the to refill my hazard suit without having to use any type of oxides in order to do it. And of course, we had another ocean. You know, like I said, this is an ocean planet. It's mostly just islands, just like Mu was. That was a bit of a quick cut there, sorry. There's a little bit better footage later. But it had a real kind of unique color for how bleak the outside kind of was. When the, in the daylight, the ocean had a really kind of nice, bright, kind of yellowish, almost sepia tone to it. Once again, like only two life forms inside of the actual ocean this time. We had the usual normal amount of land animals plus two birds. And I'll say, like, Several planets I've been on, it told me that the animal life was scarce, but every time I get there, it seems to be loaded with animal life. I mean, not overabundant, but I really don't have too hard of a time finding them until it gets down to, like, the last one or one of the two genders. It'll take me a long time to find. It won't be in a group of multiples. And once again, on the note on people complaining about the animal behavior, they always seem to travel in mating pairs with young behind them, and on the new planet, the planet I'm actually on now, I've actually seen animals finally hunting one another. Didn't seem to actually succeed or do any damage or hunt or start eating or anything over crazy like that, but I do watch them hunting other animals. Alright, we're going to go to some quick creature features here for a while. Some of the first animals I found. This first one I named the Trollenberg because of his eyes. Uh, it's based off of the, the movie The Crawling Eye which was also known as the Trollenberg Terror. And we got his female variant here with another kind of the snail kind of head type that we've seen before. Next we got the one sea mammal we ran into. We got the little nippy otter. It's kind of a ghostly kind of guy in the water. Not very uh, nice or cuddly looking. I was gonna call him Ghost Otter. But we got the Frost Swallow for our first bird. And the second one, we got the Chili Billy Bat off of Chili Billy, who used to host horror movies on uh, TV around here. And one of my ultimate goals in life, to be a host for classic monster films on TV, or possibly on YouTube one day, once I figure out the copyright thing. But this is an interesting glitch I ran into here. I, I got a kick out of this while I was doing it. I wish I would have had my mic on doing actual live narration, but since I enjoy this game so much, I've just been mostly sticking to narrating afterwards with clip kind of compilations. But I was mining this thing, and I seen that little pokey thing stick out of it, and I thought it was just a jagged piece of resource, a glitch. I tried mining it, and it didn't happen, and I finally noticed that uh, a ship had glitched into the floating piece of copper. And I had, to, I had to edit this a good bit. It took me a while, because every time I'd get him a little bit out, he'd get stuck further on. But eventually, I'd get the poor guy out. Now here we got the Skippy Goat. <clears throat> you gotta love the Skippy Goat. His uh, mate is a lot more nice looking. She kind of got like peacock frills all going down her back. Yeah, I like those kind of orange and white feathers. Almost kind of reminds me of uh, Red from Final Fantasy. Next, we got the Corinthian Stallion. I like him. 
but he's just a little tiny guy. I like how the picture makes it look like he's all big until you see him in real life, and he's just a little dinky horse. Most prehistoric horses were actually pretty small. They didn't get big till much longer on. Originally, they were almost tiny, fit on your coffee table. Now we have Hadley's Terror, what I was asking for. An actual predatorial underwater animal. Kind of a cross between a shark, a porcupine, and an alligator. He was pretty nasty. Not overly fast, but definitely aggressive. Definitely had to be taken down when in close proximity. They did actively seek me out. But I never seen him in any proximity to the otters, so I never seen him actually hunting the otters. Once again, even the barren planets, I still haven't run into one that's not beautiful in its own way. Then we got the Galopid. Forget how I came up with that name. It was a combination of other things. But another six-legged animal with that kind of, I don't know, mineral or coral-looking part to the back. The only difference between these two is the spacing of their tusks. One has them splayed out wide. The other one has them splaying out straight, kind of straightforward from the face. Next, we got Hadley's Burden. Hadley's, I figured it would be Hadley's kind of pack mule. This kind of goat-looking, purple, blistery, hump-backed. Imagine a work animal of some type. And here's his mate. Almost kind of looks like some type of uh, Asian monk hat for its headpiece there. A lot of underwater caves, though I didn't really get any good footage because of the lack of the zinc. I didn't want to do too much underwater stuff with the lack of oxygen. Now this is the most interesting one I found. Now I've seen these before on the internet. Plenty of people have run into these crazy looking living vegetable pineapple things and they're different variations throughout the universe. But I was pretty excited to finally find one myself because they're pretty good goofy looking. And they are in fact gender specific. Booberry B is definitely the female. The male doesn't say male, but the, that one there definitely says female. So that is the female of the two booberries. And I could make that one my friend, but the larger one, the, the full grown adult, I wasn't capable of making my friend. Well, all right, hitchhikers, that's about all I have for you today. So remember to stick your thumb out and subscribe if you want to hitch a ride with me, mindless bow, to the center of the galaxy.